All right, uh, welcome to week 11. We're going to be working on the salinity sensor calibration so that you guys can move ahead and uh, finalize your fish tank control systems at, here at the end of the term. So let's just do a quick review of how the salinity sensor works. Um, if this represents our tank with uh, our two probes uh, sticking down into the water, um, of course it's going to have the ions more readily available due to the salt. And so the resistance um, between these two probes is going to change and we're going to take advantage of that change to be able to measure uh, the change in salinity in the water. And so that's done uh, most easily by using what they call a 555 timer. And so we won't have to know this specifically, but the combination of the R value and a capacitor that we attach to this 555 timer allows the 555 timer to generate a pulsed waveform like this. And the thing that we're going to be watching for calibration is the period, the time from the beginning of the first pulse to the beginning of the second pulse. And so as the resistance changes in the tank, as a result of the salinity change, we'll see a change in period. Now, generally speaking, uh, more salt means electrons flow easier and a lower resistance, and less salt, conversely, higher resistance. So uh, bringing that over and relating it to the period, more salt, um, uh, lower period or higher frequency if you did a little bit of the reading and the relationship between frequency and period and then less salt higher period or lower frequency and so this is the basic operation of how the sensor works and we'll take advantage of this to do our calibration and use it to control our tank so um, just a quick overview, you won't have to uh, do this in class, we'll have this all prepared for you, but this is the wiring diagram. The UNO32 is providing power to the 555 timer, and we're also using ground from the UNO32. The capacitor is placed across two of the pins on the 555 timer, and then we capture the signal input uh, from one of those pins. Also, the salinity sensor is connected so that the capacitor and the resultant resistance of the salinity sensor from terminals A and B, if you want to call them that, uh, work together to produce that pulsed waveform that we're talking about. Let's take a quick look at the circuit. Again, in here we've got the 555 timer and the few of the wires. Most of them you won't have to worry about. This is the uh, sensor wire that's going to go off to our UNO32 and will capture that waveform information and measure the period using the UNO32. And so we'll uh, double check some of these wirings. You'll have to figure out which digital pin you should be using uh, with the program we've provided. Well, let's go to the other end. And so here the, again the salinity sensor is connected, comes over to the tank assembly. You can see we've added all of our um, power connections so that we can activate all the valves, our heater, and then here the salinity sensor comes in and is tied to this probe. Let me take this out of here so you can take a quick look at it. And just a simple pair of pliers to pull it out. And there's the two stainless steel screws that will go inside the tank and act as our uh, sensor. Today we're going to use our sample test fixture, so we'll press it into this, and so this is so that we can use smaller amounts of um, water to complete our calibration. Um, so that's uh, the initial setup. We'll put this back in there when we're done doing our calibration and actually test the fixture today. So let's talk about our calibration. Let's look at the little bit of information here. All right, so prior to class, one of your notebook entry items is to uh, work out the volumes that you'll need to complete the sample preparation. So you're going to work with a partner team. Uh, because we have small test samples, we're going to have you guys use less water this semester. And so you're going to prepare six samples, uh, 200 milliliters each. And so go through the math and some of the reading and verify that you can decide how much mass or volume of uh, the DI water that you're provided with and the salinity, the 0.15% saline that you're provided in order to create all six of these samples. All right. So we're going to use the sample calibration fixture uh, and some small Dixie cups uh, to minimize that water. We're going to load and run the program as well. So let's take a quick look at the program. Again, while we're here, let's take a look at, this is the spreadsheet that will, you should have something like this prepared. Uh, we're going to have the percent uh, salt by mass here, and then uh, the time in microseconds for the period of the pulse. So let's take a look at the program. Of course, this program is copied directly from our uh, materials in ANGEL, our reference materials. This is the program for salinity and uh, recording that period and um, modifying it for the calibration. 
so you'll have to get familiar with which pins are being used here and then later on you'll also have to correct the not calibrated to calibrated once you've figured out uh, what your y equals mx plus b values are from your graphs. This is very similar to the temperature week. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I think I already have this running. I'm going to pull up the COM port, zero port, yes. Um, so it's in a stalled pattern right now because it has no sample in the fixture. Let's go ahead and do a, an example of that. Alright, so I have all the samples prepared, 200 milliliters of each. Again, you'll be sharing it with the team behind you. And so what we're going to start with is uh, uh, about, hmm, I don't know, just about half of this, a little bit more than half a Dixie cup would be fine. Um, pour that into your sample fixture. Right, a little bit over full. And now if you look at your serial monitor, we should see a new value. So right now the serial monitor is providing a value of 254, approximately 55. So again, you'll go to your spreadsheet, enter that value, 254 microseconds, and go on to your next sample. So let's do a quick a couple of more samples here. Um, this is going to be wastewater, so we're going to go ahead and uh, put it in a little waste cup. We'll use it later on here. So that one and that one go away, and we move on to the next sample. So pour in the next sample and collect the same data. I'm not going to show you the uh, data entry piece, but again, that's all we need to do. We want to make sure there's no air bubbles in it. Uh, it should work out very well. And so that will give you a separate value for period and you can assign it to, in this case, the 0.125% salt. So again, we repeat this, do it with another sample, and again, you'll be, oops, sorry, almost mixed my samples there. Um, put the 0.1% sample in and uh, take a reading and match, match them up. So um, ultimately you'll end up with uh, a bit of waste here, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that in here, uh, make the assumption that we've tested the other samples. You'll do the 0 0.075, the 0 0.05, and some of that material would end up in your waste cup, all right, as, since you're sharing with the team behind you. So that's the key data. You've tested it in the sample fixture, and now you have your calibration data. And so I'm going to make up a little bit of data here. Once again, um, you'll oops, put in these values, um, let's see, 500, maybe 700, uh, 900, and these are guesses, 1100, and you'll have real data, um, uh, 1500. Oops, 1500. This is not real data, but you will result, get a resulting graph. And these, again, are the important graphs. You'll be graphing period versus mass, percent uh, saline by mass, and then the opposite of that, uh, saline versus period. And so, again, you'll have to decide which one of these are important uh, for your calibration correction inside your program. So switching back to the original data sheet, you'll gra capture those values. Um, I would put them on a spreadsheet so that it can is readily available and then you can set it up to correct your um, uh, program. So we go back to the program and again this is where you um, I'll highlight the section here that's important. This float command has the calibration on it. Let me stretch this a little bit wider here. Okay, so these this y equals mx plus b is what you'll need to correct using that data. Same as last week. All right, so that being said, let's say that it's running, and it is running still. The next piece, let's go ahead and move this to the side. So we captured the data. I kind of breezed through that. Completed the graphs and trend lines. Uh, <clears throat> you select the trend line and uh, select the, uh, and change the program to update so that it actually provides you an actual um, measurement that's equivalent to the salinity value in the tank. Check two or three samples while you're at it. So uh, throw in your 0.15% again, throw in your uh, 0.0125 and see if those samples read off correctly on your uh, serial monitor on your programming.
Okay? So that's the first part of the activity this week. The second part is the salinity change test. And so we're going to complete a quick test of the valve flow rates. And you need to do, I would say, three tests at different times. I'll show you here what that means. And then determine the number of milliliters for every second that the valve is open. Um, later on, you'll be wanting to add a few milliliters, and you, so you need to know how long to open the valve in order to add that desired value, um, valve volume. Okay, so uh, let's do that part first here. So I'm going to set these aside. We're trying to keep our water separate from our electrical stuff, typically. All right, so the valves that we're going to operate are going to be these ones here. So we can use one of our cups to capture water that flows through the tank. And so we're going to put the, some of the waste water in here and have an empty cup here to capture the water. We can use this to do our flow rates. And so I'll um, activate the valve for just a second and you'll have a partner uh, to do this. And so if I activate the valve, I need a jumper wire actually to grab that. All right. And could you hold the uh, hose here? So we want to point that down into the cup there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So make sure I get your partners to help you out there. We're going to trigger. This is uh, the deionized water valve. So that's yellow here. So again we're going to trigger this by applying the 3.3 volts which we've got right here on the rails to the input on that particular one. So we should see the valve operate. And so um, we'll, let's get a look at the valve running. You want to run some water through it before you do your test because otherwise the bubbles might get caught in there. So there's a the little water running through so I'll pause that. Now you would want to empty the tank and then run it for one second or two seconds or five seconds. So here I'm going to do one example. I'm going to run it for three seconds and see how much water we capture. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Of course you should do that more precisely with a stopwatch, but you can then measure the volume of the water that's captured and that will give you the flow rate. So do that uh, two or three times with each valve and that will help you understand how to add uh, deionized and saline water. Uh, take the time to uh, hook it back up and that gets you your valve flow rate data. So the spreadsheet, you just recommend that you create a spreadsheet for that. Now the next thing, let's get our tank pumping because we want to predict the change in salinity. So we're going to fill it with waste water here. Oops. <laughs> Didn't I do this last week too? All right, so we loosen this up, put our salinity sensor back in the tank, and now we have a tank that's not uh, too bad. So put in uh, parts of an unknown uh, in here to get your tank filled. Let's do some of this. And your wastewater would have been the thing to use here. Clearly I made an error. So let's get this running. All right. So we you know, check our salinity here, and we're reading a salinity value of um, oh my calibration is off. So we have 97 microseconds, and from your calibrated data, you'll have uh, uh, the salinity value actually showing. So now you have to predict uh, what will happen when you add 20 milliliters of deionized or saline water. So um, then you'll get fresh saline and you'll fill the tank for the saline source like that. And then you'll run the valve for enough time to add 20 milliliters of water. Now before you do this you should make the prediction of what the new saline value is going to be. So this is where we come back to the mathematics of uh, mixing two solutions. Alright, so in this case we're going to we're reading a value of 96 and you'll have the salinity value. I'm going to run it, uh, I think these flow rates are somewhere around 5 milliliters per second. You'll verify that in your experiment. I'm going to run this 
uh, to get 20 milliliters, I'll have to run it for four seconds. So I'm going to have a stopwatch available, and you guys should do it more accurately. I'm going to right now the value is currently reading 96, 91. Excuse me. I'm going to run this for four seconds. One, two, three, four. All right. So I've added some uh, saline to the tank, and the new reading is 85 microseconds. So um, that prediction, I should, or that actual test, I should compare it to the prediction. All right, let's take one more look at our what you need to have done by the end of the day this week. So again, the finished items. You should have the two graphs that from the calibration. Um, for both period versus uh, salt and then salt versus period. Select which graph is appropriate to complete your modification to the program. And then you'll do the change test and that of course uh, involves the flow rates for the valves, a simple test for that, and then uh, prediction and verification of your ability to change the salinity. So these are the things very similar to the temperature week um, with the calibration and then a test of their ability to apply that information. That's it for this week. Um, let's uh, see, we'll see you in class.